scientific notation. And as always, the very first thing that I need to do is explain what scientific notation is and why it's important that we have it in the first place. So the first thing that I want to talk about is this word notation. Now that is a word that we've seen quite a few times already. And again, it means the way that we notate or the way that we write things. So scientific notation is more of a way of how we write things. And those specific things that we're talking about here are extremely large numbers or extremely small numbers. So when we see those numbers, we don't typically write out every single digit. We put it in scientific notation. Now, the official scientific notation is written as I have it up here. And yes, it may look like I have a typo in this, but it's actually written that way for a reason. Scientific notation is a number where the decimal has to be after the first digit. And of course, that first digit cannot be equal to zero. So a number where the decimal is after the first digit times 10 to some power or 10 to some exponent. So now that I've kind of explained what it is, let me give you a real life example of scientific notation. And you probably hear about this weekly, if not more. My favorite real life example of scientific notation is the US national debt. So how much debt are we actually in as a country? This is um, as of February 1st, 2014, the national debt is listed right here. It is cents. Now, if you're talking about this to a friend, you're probably not going to explain to them that the national debt is this and recite every single one of these numbers. Most likely what you're going to say to them, or probably what you hear on the news quite often, is something like $17.2 trillion. And that is an example of scientific notation. Now, this is not perfect scientific notation, because remember I defined scientific notation where the decimal has to be after the first digit, but this is an example of it of where we see it quite often. So now that we know what it looks like, and now that we know it is something that we see, let's actually do some math examples over this. So the first set of examples that I have here is converting from scientific notation to standard decimal notation. And what standard decimal notation means is it means just how we would see it in day-to-day -day life. So with these numbers fully written out. Now notice that both of these are officially in scientific notation because they're in that format that I gave you earlier, where the decimal is after the first digit and it's times 10 to some power. So here are specific examples of what scientific notation should look like. Now what we need to do is convert this just to regular numbers. Now we can officially write this out completely showing every step, which I call the long way, or we can condense it and make it into a short way. I'm going to do the steps of the long way here to prove to you that we can skip those steps and in essence come down to the short way. Starting with example one here, if I were to work this out entirely, step by step, the first thing that I would do is my exponents, 10 to the sixth power. Well, that is 10 times itself six times. Now I could go through and do all of this multiplication here, or I can show you the easy step of any base tens multiplied by each other. That basically is a one followed by all of those zeros. So 10 to the sixth power is again a one followed by six zeros. So this is one million. So this is 2.437 times one million. Now, how do we multiply something by 1 million? Well, the easy way to do that is just to move your decimal point over the number of zeros that you have. So I have six zeros here, so I'm going to move my decimal point over six zeros. And since this is a large number, I'm going to move it to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
So what I have left is 2, 4, 3, 7. And then with every one of these loops here that doesn't have a number with it, I need to fill those in with zeros. So I have three zeros on the end of this problem. Now I'm going to insert commas so this number is easier to read. So this translates to 2,437,000. So that's my official answer. But as I said before, this is the long way. So we can actually skip a couple of these steps. So instead of writing out what 10 to the 6th is and then moving it that number of decimal places, all we have to do is look at that power and move my decimal place that many units over. So I could have started this from the beginning, 2.437 times 10 to the 6th and just moved my decimal place over six units. One, two, three, four, five, six. And of course, we're going to get the exact same answer that I got before. So that's the easy way. So let's shift over here to example two. Again, I'm gonna skip all those steps in between that I don't really need. All I need to do is move my decimal place. So I have my decimal place here, and I'm going to move it negative four units which means I move it four units to the left. So one, two, three, four. So that's where my new decimal place goes. And of course, each one of these loops here gets filled in with the missing zero. So this is point zero 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 nine eight two. Now that's probably good enough for me, but officially we really should probably put a decimal point in front of it. So in this example, our final answer is 0 0.000982. And again, remind you that scientific notation is to help us with extremely large numbers that we saw here and extremely small numbers, which we see here. So that way we don't have to write out all those zeros at the beginning or at the end. So in these two examples, we went from scientific notation to standard decimal notation or just normal numbers. In this set of examples, we're going to go the other way around. These are just normal numbers or standard decimal notation, and now we're going to convert it to scientific notation. It's pretty easy. All we need to do is figure out where our decimal place needs to go, and that's always after the first digit, which isn't zero. So in example one, my decimal place needs to go here. And then I need to figure out how many places would I move that decimal place to get it there. Now, if there's no decimal place in the problem, it's, of course, written after the number. So I need to figure out how many times would I move that decimal place from here to here. And that is the exponent that you're going to end up with. So in this example, I'm going to have it move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units. So 10 to the positive 5. Since this is a large number, I should have a positive exponent. Now my number on the left is where my decimal is after the first digit, and I keep all of my significant digits. Do not do any rounding here. So the only thing that we really get to throw away is the zeros at the beginning, or in this case, at the end of the problem. So here is my answer of scientific notation. In example two, I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can work this one on your own. So again, the first step is to figure out where your decimal needs to go, and it's after the first digit. And then you need to figure out how many places did it actually move to get there. So if I start here, it's going to move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight places. So my exponent's going to be times 10 to the eight. Since this is a small number, my exponent will be negative. And the only numbers that we get to throw away is that the zeros at the beginning or the end of the problem. So the numbers that I keep is 3.98 times 10 to the negative 8. So in this video, we explained what scientific notation is, and we did a conversion from scientific notation to decimal notation and vice versa.